what you just did all that clapping that's cool for me but guess what i didn't wake you up this morning i didn't start you on your way so why don't you just take a moment on the first sunday of 2021 and give praise where praise is due come on you may be in your your kitchen you you may be on your couch you may be in your bed but you better praise him you 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 made it to 2021 350,000 people died to COVID last year. And if you're watching, you have survived. You got to give God praise. Don't be casual right now. You have an internet service. God has blessed you with resources. He's blessed you with life. You got to give God praise right now. Who am I talking to? Do not come into this year thinking that this was planned or promised. You are here by God's grace and you are here by his mercy. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I need you to know that if you are watching and you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, it's because God loves you and there's a great plan and purpose for your life. Do you receive that right now? Do you receive it right now? Now, now, so often we transition into the new year and we're waiting to see what's going to happen. Before we even wait to see what's going to happen, why don't we declare what's going to happen, right? Why don't you declare that I am fearfully and wonderfully made? Come on, somebody, that I am going to make it through. That this is going to be the year where I transition closer to God, closer to my purpose. I will become everything he created me to be. Why don't you declare right now who you're going to be? I'm excited that God saw fit to bring us through and before we get into the word I want to say one other thing to remind you our hearts go out to every family that lost a loved one last year especially those that lost someone to COVID and I don't want us to be so excited about what God is doing that we aren't in touch with those who've lost a loved one while Christmas was great, there were some. The Zoom screen was empty because a family member was not there. There was a chair that was empty. So let us be mindful and be grateful for the life that God has given us. And let us have a heart that grieves with those that grieve. Let us have a heart that isn't so focused on what we're going to get that we leave those that are hurting behind. So right now, I just want to let you know that if you've lost a loved one we are with you we're with you we pray with you and we want you to know you are not going through this alone if you receive that why don't you go ahead and give God praise why don't you go ahead and thank him why don't you go ahead and thank him thank him amen 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 so uh you know you know how we do it here at, at Zoe first of all Pastor Chad, thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Love you. Love you like, like you, my brother, because you are my brother from another mother for sure. You may have your seat. You may have your seat. Uh, some of you who are at home, you're already sitting. So, uh, amen. Keep sitting. But you might be standing in a minute, depending on how this word hits you. Um, so this whole year for me, God has given me one idea. And you are, are the first that's going to hear what this idea is about. Because what I, I have realized is that too many people are not living free. Ah, what is keeping you in prison right now? Too often we, we are caught up in a prison of negativity and negative thoughts and, and negative self-talking. And, and we're so concerned about other people's expectations of us that we can't even live according to our calling because we want to make sure everybody approves of every move. But may I submit for your consideration if God has ordained you to make a move and everybody doesn't approve as long as he approves. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. The whole idea this year for me is living free. You've got to live free. Turn to your neighbor, put in the comments. I've got to live free. 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 It is time to live free. So I want to go to the word and I want to work through this word. And, and, I, and listen, I, I can't apologize <laughs> for what God has, has called me to, to say. Uh, so I just want you to know that I'm going to give you what God told me to give you. And then, uh, you know, you can take it up with him. Amen. I want to read the words of Jesus. 
and they say this, John chapter 8. I want to start around verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth, the truth that Jesus was say, sent to the world to save us from sin. That Jesus is the son of God who ultimately was going to die on the cross for our sins, be rise again, and will come again to save us. So you will know the truth that there's hope and that you will not die to sin because Jesus is saying, I am the hope. And if you know that I'm the truth, then you will be free. Then they answered him saying, well, we, we're the Abraham descendants and we have, have never been slaves of anyone. So uh, how can you say that we shall be set free? And then Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son, those that are in the family belong forever. Verse 36. So if the son sets you free, then you are free indeed. <laughs> so Jesus is saying, listen, if you believe in me as the son of God, and I have already set you free. So if you have been set free from your sin, why do you still live as someone who has no freedom? I got to talk to somebody right now. Okay, so let's, let's, let's break this down. What's happening spiritually? Sin is basically when we miss the mark, when we don't hit God's law. All right? So look, let me give you a little theology, just a touch of theology, and then we'll get into some things that really show you how to walk this out practically. So the theology is when we miss the mark, when we miss the mark of hitting God's law, we sin. Well, what is God's law? Jesus says this. You can sum up God's law in two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the commandments hang on these two. Love God with all your mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. What's interesting to me is that we're in a time in Christianity where I believe that we as the body of Christ are missing the mark. Uh, many of you, I don't have to remind you of what just happened in November and the political divide. And I was shocked at how the body of Christ, there was no unity. And we took sides if you're on the liberal side or the conservative side. If you are blue or you are red, shots were fired depending on your side. And I had to ask the question, if the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself, why is it that when my neighbor disagrees with me, I have no love for the neighbor? Why is it when I get into confrontation, I feel justified in shooting somebody down instead of giving them a word to build them up? Mm. What we miss is we, we always love to hit the part, uh, love your neighbor. We say, oh, you're supposed to love your neighbor. But the text says, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. So, so what I believe is the, one of the reasons why we're loving our neighbor in such a poor way is because we love ourselves poorly. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. See, 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 if I'm loving my neighbor as myself and I can't love my neighbor well, it means I'm not loving me well. Mm. I, I cannot give you what I don't have. <laughs> filled cups, fill cups. Watch out. Filled cups, fill cups. So, so if you are empty on love and I have no love in me, I can't fill you with the love of Christ if the love of Christ is not in me. So when we talk about living free, we talk about living in the freedom of knowing that Jesus has died for our sins and that we are free to love no matter if the love comes back. Mm. I got to talk to somebody. I'm going to go off my notes. I'll come right back to it. This whole message is going to set your year up in the right way. I have no doubt if, if you literally, if, if, if you apply what God has given me for you, your year is going to go to another level. I guarantee it. So, so often when we talk about love, we put conditions on it. Well, I'll love if they love me. But think about it. Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins, no matter if we choose to accept him or not. Love is sacrifice. 
I may not agree with you, but I still love you. And, and because I love you, we can debate the issue, but I will not allow my debate to get into tearing you down. Because if I tear you down, that means I tear me down. And I can't lead you to Christ if I'm telling you that you're wrong and everything you're doing is wrong. We, we may have a difference of opinion about a certain issue, but I have to be loving even in the face of discourse. We're talking about living free. We're talking about living free. It is time to live free. So what does this mean? Spiritually, it means to not be under the control or power of sin. All right? So when we live free spiritually, we are not under the control or the power of sin. Now, here's what happens. Why do I want to remind you that Jesus said who the sun sets free is free indeed? Why? Because what happens is we, we sin... We miss the mark, and we go down a rabbit hole of negativity. Oh, I'm terrible. I can't believe I did this again. What is wrong with me? God, I'm just, Lord, I can't get it together. I'm terrible. I'm not worthy of your best. Now, now I got to give somebody a commercial break because here's what happens. When you and I begin to believe that we are not worthy of God's best, we then make decisions at a lower level. Because, see, if I'm not worthy of the best, God, I'll settle for, for less. And so when I settle for less because I don't believe I'm worthy of the best, then I allow people into my life that God never ordained. <laughs> because, see, think about this. Think about this. Um, it's so interesting. There was a, an event that, uh, that people were going to, and the price was very high. And I said, man, that's a, that's a, that's a serious price. And they said, we keep the price at a certain level because we want a certain level of clientele. I said, hmm, that's interesting. But I thought about our lives too often when we don't believe that we're worthy of the best. <laughs> if we just let any old body into our life. Mm. I'm talking to somebody right now. Let me give you a commercial break. Some of you, you may be dating somebody right now, but you're dating that person from, from a lesser value, from, from like, oh, I'm not worthy of the best. And so you've allowed someone interest into your life that God says, if you knew what I really had for you, you wouldn't even spend time uh, texting with this person. You wouldn't even spend time FaceTiming with this person because if you knew what I had for you, you would say, I am not going to spend another moment living less than because I know that I'm required to get God's best. Living free means we are no longer under the power and authority of sin. Now, why is this important? Because we have to remember this because the enemy wants us to think of ourselves based upon our failures. Okay, so here is the first thing I need you to get if you want to live free this year. Get this phrase in your spirit. That was then, this is now. <laughs> that was then, this is now. Okay, okay, okay. So, so this is how it goes. The moment you miss the mark, the moment you fall back into the sin you're trying to get God to deliver you from, I want you to get up from that sin and say, hey, I'm free. That was then, this is now. Now, you may have just hung out with somebody and somebody may have been a witness to your sin. And they may say, what are you talking about? You just did X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I did it then, but now I'm free. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. That was then. This is now. You got to have amnesia. Because the longer you stay in your fall, in the fall that God delivered you from, you can't actually do what he's called you to do and become who he's called you to be. That was then, this is now. Yeah, yeah, I may have fallen 60 seconds ago, but I'm standing now. <laughs> who am I talking to right now? I need you to get out of this mentality that you are not enough. You are more than enough. Why? Because God sent Jesus to die on the cross for you, for your sin, for my sin. Come on, somebody. That was then. This is now. Go ahead and put in the comments. That was then. This is now. That was then. This is now. That was then. This is now. Some of you came into the, to the new year with, you know, hey, I want to eat better. It's week three days in, and you, that ain't happened yet. <laughs> That's all right. After you eat that piece of cake, say, uh-uh, I'm back on my regiment. That was then. This is now. <laughs> so living free spiritually means to not be under the power or a control 
of sin. Can we go a step deeper? Living free practically means, and I wrote this down because I didn't want to miss it, not being under the emotional, physical, or mental control of anyone or anything. Not being under the emotional, mental, or physical control of anyone or anything. Now, what I have come to observe is that most of us are not living free. How? Because we are allowing people, circumstances, and situations to control us emotionally, mentally, or physically. Let me ask you this. If you didn't care about someone else's expectations of you, how would you live? Yeah, now I'm going to come sit right next to you. Yep, I'm sitting right there on the couch. We right there. Yep, I'm all up in your business. Because, because what happens is we become, we live in a prison of other people's expectations. Well, other people expect me to be this and live this way and dress this way and talk this way. And if I don't do that, I may fall out of their good graces or I might meet their judgment. And so as a result, in order to keep them happy at the expense of keeping him happy, I will live in this prison, but I will never become free because I'm so concerned about pleasing them over pleasing him and pleasing me. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but if you want to live free, you got to break yourself out of the prison. Of other people's expectations when you live free you live by the expectations you choose okay all right okay okay pastor Chad I gotta go I gotta go step deeper as a religious Christian community I was raised in the church I've been in the church my whole life what I find is that most people in the church don't actually live for God they don't actually live for Jesus they don't actually live according to their creation they live according to what's expected. Oh, well, if you're a good Christian, you'll say this. If you're a good Christian, you'll do that. If you're a good Christian, you'll go here. If you're a good Christian, you'll watch this. So what happens in order to not meet the ridicule and the judgment and the vilification of others, we allow ourselves to not live according to what God put in our heart, to not do what God called us to do. And then we wonder why we're not happy because we're not actually free. We're in a prison of their thoughts, making them happy. And at the end of your life, they ain't going to be there, but he's going to be there. And he's going to say, why didn't you start that business? Why didn't you write that script? Why didn't you put on what I told you to put on? Why didn't you do that move? Why didn't you give that check? He's going to say, why didn't you? And you can't turn to somebody else and say, well, my mama expected me to stay home. Well, God bless your mama, but what has God called you to do? Who the son says free is free indeed. You're free, but you're walking around like a prisoner. Other people's expectations can't make you or break you. Hmm. Point two, if you really want to live free this year, stop living for likes. <laughs> Some of you are not living free because you are so concerned and caught up and imprisoned by social media. You, you, your whole life is, is, is consumed by what you post and how you post. And, and, and you want to get a certain number of likes. So you're, you're adjusting the filters. And, and you're making sure you're taking pictures in the right lighting. And you're making sure that if something doesn't work, you take it down real quick. And you post something else to get more likes. You try to find the time in which the likes will be flowing. So you can post at the right time. And then you find value when the likes are what you want. But then you find depression when they're less than what you need. I don't know who I'm talking to right now but you're living for likes here's what i know at the end of our life ain't gonna be no facebook or instagram ain't gonna be no tiktok i'm not saying that social media doesn't have an important part i'm not saying that it's not uh, you can't use it for good but what i'm saying is that when you live for likes and you don't live for love there's something wrong with the culture just because somebody like your picture does not mean they like you. Do you know there are people that like your picture because they want to see what God is doing in your life. But secretly behind the like is a hate. They're hating on your success. 
They don't want to see what God's getting ready to do. And here you are trying to get them to like you. Who cares if they like you or your picture? As long as God has ordained you to do what he's called you to do, you've got to do it. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you know I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> no, because anything I'm talking to you, I had to get free from the delivery of, of living for likes. I said, God, what is going on with me? My emotions going up when likes come in. Emotions going down when they're not coming in. What am I doing? Why don't people like me? What's, what happens on social media is not a reflection of your value. You are God's daughter. You are God's son. He has ordained you for greatness. If you got one like or a million, it doesn't matter. And may I submit for your consideration. Most of those who have large followings is because they spend a lot of money. Not that they're spending money buying likes, but they have more money to put into their social media. So if you had a million dollars, you have a million, million followers too. So the amount of followers and the amount of likes is not an indicator of your value or your reach. You got to get free from allowing social media to, to dictate your emotional state. Period. End of story. <clears throat> God's giving me a commercial break. I'm going to come right back to our regularly scheduled program. And some of you, you got to stop social media creeping. Some of you, your relationships didn't work out. And here you are still creeping to see what the other person is doing. Why are you concerning yourself with someone that God has delivered you from? Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who I'm talking to. Stop social media creeping. If God delivered you, I want you to unfollow. I want you to block so that you don't allow your emotional state to be dictated by what that person is or isn't doing, who they're with or who they're not with. You got to focus on you because God is trying to do something major in your life this year. Stop living for likes. You can go ahead and hashtag that, tweet that. All right, point three. If you want to live free this year, this is critical. Absolutely critical. Everybody came in this year saying, oh, happy new year. Happy new year. All these new year's resolutions. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in a new year's resolution. Why? Because a resolution focuses on the action. So here's what happens. I resolve to drink more water this year. So January 1, 2, and 3, I'm good. Mm. Ooh, I'm drinking my water. Yes. But then on the 4th, I get busy. I don't drink no water. So in the first three days, when I have a resolution to drink water, the water is a symbol, I, symbol of hope. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. But the day I don't drink the water, the water becomes a symbol that I'm not good enough. What's wrong with me? I can't even drink water consistently. What's wrong with me? I can't stay consistent with nothing. I can't stay committed to nothing. What's wrong with me? So the resolution begins to, to be a mirror that we're not enough. Why do you think so many people have a hard time keeping the resolution? It's because it's focused on the doing, not the being. So I don't believe in a New Year's resolution, but I do believe in a New You resolution. <laughs> because when you make the decision on who you want to be then you you do because you are you're not trying to do in order to be there's a difference so let me walk you through the difference quickly i am resolving to be a healthy person so that's my new you resolution so what do healthy people do healthy people drink water and because i'm a healthy person i'm going to drink water so no longer is the water a symbol that I'm not good enough. I've already decided who I'm going to be. So if I, for some reason, one day don't drink the water, I remember that was then. This is now. <laughs> I'm still a healthy person. Yep. I didn't drink water yesterday, but I'm going to drink it today because I'm a healthy person. When you make a new you resolution, then you can navigate anything that you do because it's coming from who you decided you are going to be. Do not let anything that happened uh, last year dictate who you're going to be this year. Do not let 
anything that happened last year dictate who you're going to be this year. Who God is calling you to be, I want you to become that and make the decision this year. If you are creative, I'm creative. If you are a CEO, I'm a CEO. If you are a business owner, I'm a business owner. If you are a teacher, I'm a teacher. Now, the enemy's going to want to say, well, you ain't got no business. You ain't got no classroom. You don't have no set. What you talking about? You a director. The enemy always wants to remind you of what you're not. This is why you have to be declaring what you are. You, when you decide I am a director, you ultimately become a director. Years before I became a, a producer, back when I was a teenager, I would operate as a producer. When I would intern unpaid, I would get in the office not acting like I was an intern. I said, no, I'm a producer in training. I got to talk to somebody. I got to fix your perspective right now. You're saying, oh, well, I'm not getting paid and I'm just an intern or an assistant. Are you crazy? You're in training to become everything God called you to be. And the current situation you're in is molding you and building you. But you got to know who you are. Y'all don't understand. I had to make the decision to decide who I was and then walk that out. So every decision I had to make, am I making a decision for the person I want to be or am I making a decision against that person? <laughs> I got to get onto my nose. I got to get, I got to keep going. But I just say this real quick. When you make a decision, when you decide who you are, make decisions for that person. If you are healthy, make decisions for the healthy you. So you say, okay, before I eat that cake, who is this for? That's for the old me. Mm. Okay, I got to put it down. I haven't done enough steps to earn that piece of cake. I haven't done enough steps to earn that reward. I haven't worked out enough to earn that. So I'm going to put it down. Because I'm trying to make decisions for the healthy me. I'm trying to make decisions for the better me. Right? Because when I make decisions for that person, I set myself up to become everything I already know I am. Got to keep going. Okay, so, so here's the thing. Um, some of you have been waiting to see what this year is going to bring. Point four. You've been waiting. Oh, you know, I want to see what the new year is going to bring. You got it wrong. It ain't about what the new year is going to bring. It's about what you are going to bring to the new year. <laughs> I got to talk to somebody because see what happens is when you, when you say, well, well, last year was was such a bad year. Right. Oh, my goodness. It was such a bad year. It was it was a devastating, tr just tragic year. There's no doubt about it. Here's what I know. When you tether this idea of who you're going to be, we don't know if, if the pandemic is going to get worse or there's something new that's coming. We don't know. But what we do know is when we resolve to be who God has called us to be, we have something to bring no matter what happens in the year. Don't wait to see what the year is going to bring. What are you going to bring to the year? Are you going to bring discipline? Are you going to bring creativity? Are you going to bring love? Are you going to bring service? Are you going to bring integrity? Are you going to bring character? Are you going to bring a communication? Are you going to bring camaraderie? What are you bringing to 2021? Ask not what the year can do for you. Ask what you can do for the year. Who am I talking to right now? I'm, I'm tired of us living passively and saying, well, we'll just wait and see. Are you crazy? Who the sun sets free is free indeed. You better live free today. You got to make a decision on what you're bringing. It's just like a, I was talking to my family on Friday night. It's like anybody ever been to a, a, a potluck? Right now, you got some of those that don't want to bring nothing, want to eat everybody's food. Right, right. <laughs> but then you got others who say, all right, I'm bringing something and I want to make sure what I bring elevates the level of the experience. So instead of just going to buy something, I'm going to spend some time in the kitchen. And when you bring something to the potluck. You, you end up elevating the potluck experience because those that come say, wow, you didn't buy this from pavilions. Uh, you, 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 you put some love and some, some character and some time into this. You don't realize, but whenever you bring some character to the world, whenever you bring something to this year, those that experience you say, wait a minute. Mm -mm, no, no, you're not someone who's just looking to get. You're someone who's a giver. Ooh, there's something about you that's different. May I submit for your consideration? You are going to face some unfavorable experiences this year. It ain't about the experiences. It's about how you respond. <laughs> ah, I got to talk to somebody. It ain't about what's going to happen this year. It's about how you respond. So are you bringing peace to this year? 
Huh? I got to talk to somebody. Are you bringing peace to this year? Do not wait to see what 2021 brings. Decide what you bring into 2021. I promise you, if you take this and you begin to apply it, your year is going to change. Not only is your year going to change, but right now your emotion is going to get better. Your attitude is going to improve because you got power that you haven't even tapped into. This is why you got to live free, because when you live free, you realize, wow, I got all this power. I got all this creativity. And here I am. I've been living less than. Mm. Ah, I got one more point. But before I give that point, I got I got to backtrack because God is calling me to say something. This is so important. I know we all want to feel a part of and appreciated and validated that other people, you know, that we're popular, right? Or whatever, you know, it's like we all want to be wanted. But there are some things that God is calling you to that may put you at odds with the people that love you the most. Living free is going to require some conflict and courage. Because when you realize, hey, I've been living for my parents. I have not been living for me and who God called me to be. You may have to have a tough conversation with your parents and say, I love you, but I got to tell you what's really going on with me. You may have to have a tough conversation with your relationship and the person that you're with say, hey, I love you. But you got to know what's really real. When you live free, it takes courage. And don't be afraid to take these steps because on the other side of your fear is the life that you've always wanted. When you live free, you don't allow somebody else's emotional state to become your emotional state. When you live free, you don't allow what somebody else does to impact you. I got to say this real quick and I'll get to the last point. This whole idea of, of relationships and, oh, you make me happy. I'm sorry, I'm going to burst your make you happy bubble. That's crazy. Because what happens is when you actually say, oh, you make me happy, that means I am giving my happiness to somebody else. So when they do the things that I love, oh, you make me happy. But when they do the things I hate, oh, you don't make me happy. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you making you happy? And because you ain't making you happy, you don't even know what it requires to make you happy. So on one day, something makes you happy. But on the next day, something else don't make you happy. And you wonder why you're emotionally up and down because you have not taken the time to create your own happiness. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But if you want to live free, you got to make you happy first and foremost. Mm. Somebody can make a contribution to my happiness. But but I don't give anybody the power to make me happy. I get up in the morning and I say, hey, I made it to another day. I am happy and I allow whatever I face to either contribute to my happiness, but I do not allow something to take me out of the emotional state I am committed to. You got to get ready to live in the space, in the energy, in the emotion that God has called you to and don't allow somebody else or some situation to take you out of it. Hmm. Last point. Uh, and I struggle with this one. I really struggled with this one. When God gave me this, I said, Pastor Chad, he's going to run me out the church. <laughs> if you want to live free, I know we live in a culture. It's all about how we look in the fashion. I get it. But you got to be more faithful than you are fashionable. We live in a culture right now that puts so much emphasis on, on what we're wearing. And, and, and so often I find that this generation is putting so much time into the fashion, but not enough time into faith. And if you're putting more time into your outfit, into fashion, and you don't put more time into faith, you have no a reason to ask why your year doesn't go the way God called it to go. I'm not saying how you look isn't important. Of course it is. But I am saying when you and I obsess over it to the degree that we spend more time in front of the mirror than we do in the real mirror, we're going to miss the real reflection. Can I talk to somebody right now? God bless your heart. It ain't even about what you wear. It's about what is in your heart. You got to be more faithful than you are fashionable. Your faith is going to take you where God called you to be. It, it don't matter what kind of shoes you got. I'm wearing some Under Armour shoes. I don't care. They're comfortable. They're comfortable. I ain't trying to be all stylish and fashionable. I look how I look, whatever. But I'm just here to tell you, if you are more faithful than you are fashionable, you are going to get everywhere God has called you to be. And you're going to become all that he wants you to be. Why? Because what you sow, you reap.
Hmm, I wish I could talk to somebody. How much do you have to show for how much money or time you have put into your outward appearance? It's all about your inward appearance that is going to reap the benefit. So to your soul and you will reap from your soul. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but it's about faith over fashion. Ah, hope I haven't said too much, but if I did, don't get mad at me. Take it up with him. Who the son sets free is free indeed. As we close, I need you to know you are free. You better walk around your apartment free. You better walk around your house free. You are free. You are free from sin. You are free from even missing the mark. God has delivered you from it. So here's what I want you to do. I want to pray a New Year's prayer for you, but it's not really a New Year's prayer. It's a new you prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray right now for every single solitary soul that is watching this live. And I pray for those that are watching uh, this later or watching the, the rebroadcast. I pray if anyone's watching this right now that they would live free. That they would not allow anyone or anything to control them mentally, spiritually, physically. I pray right now anyone watching this would know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. I pray right now that they would know it's about what they bring to the year, not waiting to see what the year brings to them. I pray if anyone watching this, they would know that they are who you have said they are, God. And you love them enough that you sent their, your son Jesus to die on the cross for their sins. And I pray right now that this would be the year where we live freer than before. We can think freely. We can create freely. We can, we can breathe freely. Ah, we can give freely. Why? Because we don't let anyone or anything control how we feel. And we stay completely committed and submitted to you. This is our prayer. In the mighty, holy, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we say amen.